Hola, mi amigos. David from Flash by Bicycle Nut coming to you from the beautiful island of Puerto Rico. So we came here on vacation to visit some family. And uh, when I rented a car while I was here, I had a reserve, they just medium sized car because the roads around here are kind of small. But all they had was the Expedition. And considering that I'm in the market for a three row SUV, I thought it would be a good idea to uh, get a good comparison. I currently drive a 2015 Highlander and the top runner on my list right now to replace my Highlander is the new, what do they call it, Grand Highlander with the hybrid Max system, which is relevant because that's about a $58,000 vehicle and that's exactly what this is. So this is the Expedition, it's the XLT. It's uh, closer to the bottom of the line than it is for the top of the line as far as their trim levels. But like I said, it's still a $58,000 vehicle, so not cheap. So let's take a look at the things I've had it for, we've been here about six days. And uh, so instead of just reading off specs that you can go and look online or looking at things that you'll see, I'm gonna give you what I've noticed that I do like about the vehicle in the days that I've had it and what I don't like. So hopefully that can help you if uh, those things are important to you, whether you, this is a vehicle you'd wanna purchase. So let's take a look. So the first thing we'll talk about is the size of it. And this is pretty obvious, right? It's a full size SUV. It's got a lot of room. Uh, I do like that it has power folding seats. So they fold down, push of a button and they fold all the way down. With them all the way up, I feel like the cargo capacity is um, right along lines with the Grand Highlander or a little bit, which is a little bit more than my Highlander. Uh, it's got captain chair, so this is a seven passenger vehicle. Uh, and you got nice charging displays or charging outlets, climate control back there, which is pretty standard. The third row is actually a usable row. It's not just an afterthought or like a jump seat, pretty easy to get back. It has chargers, uh, air conditioning vents back here, but there are no speakers back here. So my wife did sit back here and she was saying that uh, the music wasn't, wasn't, you know, didn't come back here very good. But a plus is definitely if the third row is important to you, there's a good amount of space here and uh, it's a nice third row. I would say that so far, my favorite part of the vehicle is the engine and transmission. This is a turbocharged V6 EcoBoost. Uh, I don't know the horsepower torque numbers on it, but it's got plenty. Uh, it moves the vehicle pretty, really well. It's got a 10 speed transmission which is just has a gear, obviously, for every use. The transmission's very smooth, shifts really nice, uh, makes it feel really torquey, and uh, really happy with the motor and transmission. Not so happy with the gas mileage. So again, I'm in Puerto Rico. The roads are kind of small. I'm at the top of a mountain, been up and down it a bunch of times, but I'm averaging about 16 and a half miles at a gallon. Uh, for a modern, I mean, for an SUV this big, at first you'd say, well, that's not too bad, but with the modern tech uh, coming through and some of the newer vehicles that are coming out, um, this that's so-so gas mileage. We take a look at the interior. It's a nice interior. Um, nothing stands out to me as awesome, but it has, it's comfortable. Uh, the gauges on the outside, again, this is a lower level trim. I'm not sure if the gauges on the higher lines are fully uh, adjustable, fully digital, uh, but the two gauges on the outside are fixed. So for me at home, I live right up basically in the Canadian border. So not being able to easily switch to kilometers an hour, why not a huge deal? It is kind of a pain in the ass to constantly be converting in your head how fast you're going in kilometers an hour. The middle part of the dash is fully digital and that is configurable. Like all, pretty much all cars today, had as Apple CarPlay, um, and I found it to be a bit glitchy. I did delete all the other phones that were in the system and that seemed to help a little bit, but I'm getting about a 90% success rate um, as far as pairing with it and not having to shut it off and back on. There's some things in the interior that just kind of drive me crazy. Well, it's got a coin holder. Like, does anybody carry coins? Nobody even pays a toll anymore. Everything's, everything's you know, through your plate or a thing. This is the wireless charger, which does work on, um, through my phone case. My wife has the OtterBox. It doesn't charge through that, but it's kind of a pain in the ass to put the phone in there. And her, she's got one of the newer, larger phones. It barely fits. I, I think that could be more convenient. 
There's a couple little holders here that I, okay, like, again, what do they use for? Now, the center console, this thing is big and roomy and nice. You have another little compartment over here and your normal glove box. Uh, and so far, this button has stuck a couple times and I've had to hit it again to get it to come out. Uh, stereo itself, I'd say it, it's okay, not great. Um, sounds decent, but if you, the volume starts to get high, it gets pretty harsh sounding. And the driving experience is, is, is nice. It's a nice, quiet vehicle. It does have quite a bit of pitch and body roll. Uh, I could use a little bit more dampening on the, the suspension. Uh, over some of the bumpier roads, it really feels like it bumps, bounces you around a lot. Uh, but again, it's a big SUV, so you're not looking for a sports car. I do did read that they just came out with a new ST version, which if you're looking for something more sporty, I would say the average person looking for this is something comfortable, and, and that's what it does. Uh, let's get to the, some of the things that drive me that I'm not really happy about. So one of them is it has different driver modes, and you can access, access them through these or the plus and minuses buttons. And let's close the door so you can see them. And then, so if I go through driver modes, you have, you can't read it because it's on there, but you have normal. Let me click my seatbelt on so that warning will go away. Okay, here we go. Now, so when we go through the driver modes, there's several different driver modes. Maybe this will go away. <laughs> and on the driver modes, what I don't like is every time, so that's, uh, Eco mode is, is with the little leaf there, and then there's sport mode. So in the modes, the only thing I've noticed that changes, to me it feels like the mapping on both the engine and the transmission changes, which is nice, you know, like so sporty, it, it feels a little sportier, eco, a little softer. Uh, but the problem is every time you shut the car off, you've got to completely hit this button like six times to put it back to the mode that you want to go to. Pain in the ass. Why wouldn't it save the mode that you want? Total, total fail on that. So this complaint might not be a big thing to everybody, but for me, I carry usually a pretty large water bottle and there are no places to put it. All this room and all we have are cup holders that fit smaller cups, no way to expand it. Again, come on, man, like what the hell? Like, you know, I'm, I know a lot of us carry water bottles. It's mind blowing to me that, that, that you know, that, that it doesn't fit them, that I gotta figure out a way to slam it, to cram it into the door and it's uh, not very convenient at all. So the big tech screen in the middle is pretty easy to use. Uh, I find navigating through it is is simple and intuitive. I, with the Apple CarPlay, we have my Spotify and we have my maps, which any of the newer cars is gonna have this and it's nice. One of the things that I'm not really crazy about with it is that if I, so for drive modes, we have this instead of a traditional thing, whatever, I got used to it in like a minute. But when I put it in reverse, this, like I said, this is a pretty big vehicle. Now, I don't understand, for a $60,000 vehicle, this is the only camera view I get, is the rear camera. It does have this, picture of the car and there's sensors around the car so you will see if you get close to something but like parking this thing in a big parking lot I, I can't believe it doesn't have it doesn't have like the 360 view again I understand this is not a top of the line model but it's 60 grand uh, for like I said the vehicle that I'm looking at currently the Grand Highlander in the hybrid max for it's 58 grand same grand and for that same money for that you get the 360 view which is nice for parking, especially in a large vehicle. This thing is as big as basically a parking spot. You do get used to the size of it pretty quickly driving it, but when you're parking it in low speed maneuvers, again, for the money, I think it should have a 360 camera. And I think I do like the looks of the vehicle. I realize looks are subjective. It's a three row SUV. None of them are ever gonna be like, oh, look at that. But it's a good sharp looking vehicle. Overall, I do enjoy driving it. Like I said, it's quiet and smooth. Uh, the interior is nice, but nothing's really over the top. I think for the money, I don't think it offers a lot of value. I did read that in 2025, they're gonna come out with a new Expedition, and I would expect that would get rid of a lot of the shortcomings that I feel are in the vehicle. Uh, just for, again, it's an, again, I know it's an, more of an entry level, trim level, but I don't know how you call a $60,000 car entry level. And it should just have some more bells and whistles that come with 
with it. The engine transmission, nice. Overall package is nice, but unless you're really a Ford fan, I, I don't expect that this uh, would really call to you unless you get a really great deal on it. So thanks for watching, guys. And I uh, hope this helps some of you if you're looking at a Ford Expedition or a three-row SUV. Take care.